Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel blog post. Today's tutorial is one that was a challenge I had from a project that I was working on. And the challenge was to figure out how to differentiate in Excel, summing up values that added up to zero versus cells that were blank, and how to differentiate between the two in Excel. Uh, the result came from some help I got from some Excel experts on LinkedIn, and I wanted to share that with you. So let's see how we can do that in Excel. So here is our scenario. I have a list of accounts and months here, July and August, and there's two transactions for each account, a debit and a credit. And in this chart here, I want to pull in the fact of four each account for each month, if the values added up to zero, I want it to say paid. If there's a positive or negative balance, I want it to say amount pending. Or if the values for that month for that account are blank, I want it to say no transactions. So you can see here for account A15 in July, they had a positive 23, negative 23, since those add up to zero it says paid correctly. For B22, I have a 4 and a negative 5, so that would be a positive or a negative balance, and that gives me amount pending. And here, J98 for July, you can see these were blank, so I wanted it to say no transactions. So my first thought was to use an if statement along with some ifs, and I would use column D as my summing range, and then column B as my criteria range with the item in column F as the criteria. And then column C is the next criteria range with G as the next criteria and have it add up again what's in column D. Figuring that these would add up to zero, these would add up to a negative or positive balance, and then this would give me no transactions. So here is what I ended up with. And here's my formula. And you can see I used if and some ifs. So I said if the sum ifs of that scenario came up to zero, then mark it paid. If not, then if they came up to something that didn't equal zero, give me amount pending. And finally, if neither of those were true, then give me no transactions. And you notice they all worked out just like I wanted them to, except in the scenario where there were blanks. Instead of getting no transactions, I got paid, the same as if they added up to zero. So let's see why that happens. If over here I entered a 5 and a negative 5, and I added those up, you'll see Excel gives me zero. If I copy that sum function over, notice here I'm adding up 04 and 05. Those are both blank, but I still get the result of zero. So in my scenario, when I said the sum ifs, if it equals zero, mark it paid, it took the scenario where there were no transactions and had blank cells, and Excel treats blanks just as if they were zero when they're summing, and I got the same result as if they added up to zero. So I realized that's not going to be the answer using the sum ifs function along with if. So the result I got from some experts on LinkedIn was to use some product along with the if statement. And if you're not familiar with some product, I'm going to go through a somewhat of a lengthy explanation as to how this worked and how this formula solved my problem. So we're going to move over to sheet two to go through an explanation of how this sum product and if combination worked out. So in sheet two, what I've done is I've copied over the transactions and copied over the results. And here is the formula. The top one is the formula we used for the first line here that marked them paid. The bottom formula is what we used for no transactions. The only difference being the top refers to row 2, the bottom refers to row 5. So we're just going to walk through this to show you how some product and the if statements work. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to break the formula up 
so you can see a little more clearly the logic behind it. I'll do the same for the lower one so again it makes it easier to understand. So what the formula says is if this sum product formula is greater than zero then run this if formula and this if formula if it's true market paid if it's false market amount pending but if the first if formula equals zero then give me no transactions so that is the way that the basic logic of the if formula works now how did we come up with the sum product to either give me something greater than zero or give me zero well let's look at sum product equals sum product it says returns the sum of the products of corresponding ranges or arrays and it just has array 1, array 2, array 3, etc. So you can look at my sum product array 1 does b2 to b17 equal f2 times c2 to c17 equals g2 and multiply that times d2 to d17 are those numbers. I use the is number function here to determine whether those are actual numbers or not. So in sum product it's going to give you the result of those arrays and then it multiplies the first array times the second array times the third array and gives you those products and then as the name suggests it sums those products to tell you what the answer is. So let's walk through the first scenario. Does B2 to B17 equals F2? Well F2 is A15 so I can see these two cells here and these two cells here equal A15. Now in Excel true equals 1, false equals 0. So I can put a 1 in those and all the rest turn out to be false so I'm just going to enter a 0 in those corresponding cells. So I'm basically using this range here to show what the results of the sum product formula is for our three columns of data. The next does C2 to C17 equals G2. Well, G2 is July, so it looks like this group is true, true equals 1. This group is false, so that equals 0. And lastly, values. Are these values numbers, D2 to D17? Well, we can see that this group is numbers, these two here are numbers, and this last group is numbers. And again, if it's true, I enter a 1. If it's false... I enter a zero. So what does Excel do? If you remember it multiplies the array so it takes this array times that times that and that's what our column M is doing J times K times L. So 1 times 1 times 1 is 1 same with the second row all the rest have zero so anytime you have a multiplication that has a zero in it it's going to give you a zero. So some product, when it added up the product of all those arrays, I got a 2. So in the first formula, which was in cell H2 in this case, if that resulted in greater than 0, then run the second if statement. In the second if statement, the first part is the same. Does B2 to B17 equals F2? I left those in there. Does C2 to C17 G2? Those are the same as what we had looked at before. And then the last, just give me D2 to D17. So I'm going to take and I'm going to copy D2 to D17 over to here. Control V. And you can see the sum of the product of those arrays is zero. So if the sum product equals zero, mark it paid. If it didn't, mark it amount pending. Notice the first one had paid because the sum of the product of those arrays ended up being zero. Okay, so I'm going to undo that and I'm going to delete this value. I'm sorry, I'm going to leave those there. And instead, let's take a look at the formula that was in row 5 for J98. Here we're looking at F5. So is F5, which is J98. So J98 the B2 to B17 equals F5, which is J98. 
Well, in this column, this group does not, and this group does not. So I'm going to put zeros in those, and here, and here, that is true, so I'm going to put ones. The month for G5 is July. It's the same as we had last time, so I'll leave those ones and zeros there. And then is D2 to D17 numbers, that's the same as it was before. But you notice now when you multiply the three columns or the three arrays, I get all zeros. So in this formula, if some product of the three different arrays is greater than zero, run that. If it's not greater than zero, give me no transactions. So in this case, since the sum of the product of the three arrays turned out to be zero, then I got the result of no transactions. So that's how the row five, where J98 July and no transactions, where these were blank, ended up giving me all zeros. The sum of that is zero. So I was able to use some product along with these if statements and is number to determine the difference between summing up blanks or summing up values that ended up in zero. And there you have it. I hope you like what you see. If you do like what you see here, please take a minute to share this post on your favorite social network. I can be found on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So I hope you enjoy this. If you'd like to see more, please feel free to stop by my website, excel-bytes.com, and I hope you subscribe. So have a great day and happy excelling.